It's that time of month again. I just got a shipment of brand new comic books from DCBS. Check it out. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and this is North Garden Comics. You know, my favorite videos to make are those where I share back issue hauls with you. The good books I get for great prices at shows, sales, conventions, you know, where I'm filling in runs and finding keys for a dollar, 50 cents, 25 cents. Uh, that's exciting because that involves the thrill of the hunt. But I don't just collect back issues, I also collect new comic books. So once a month, I do a video where I share all of the new books I got for a particular month. Why just once a month? That's because I pre-order all of my new books through an online service called DCBS. I've mentioned it before on the channel. And what that means is that I order books like two months prior to publication. And then, for example, these books came out in January. All the books for January get held together and then I pay one flat shipping fee and they all get shipped at the end of the month to me. Some of the upsides to using a service like this are that I enjoy like 40 to 50% off cover price. And even when you throw in the shipping fee that I pay, it's still better than paying cover price. I also pay a little bit extra and get a Mylar bag and board with each of these books. And even with that cost included, it's still cheaper than paying cover price. So I wanna share those books with you today. In just a minute, we're gonna swing the camera around and we will unbox this baby here but before we do let me pause and say if you like this kind of content please take just a second hit that subscribe button and as you watch if you see something you like give it a thumbs up and of course leave me your thoughts comments and questions down below that being said let's swing the camera around and get this box open as we get started here i always start with the box for new comic books because Again, there's some of you who may be looking and wondering what DCBS is like, so I like to show this unboxing part of the experience. It comes very well taped in a nice sturdy cardboard box that you'll see. I've never had an issue with packaging. You can see it comes with these foam kind of borders that are form fitting to hold this block in here nice and secure. And then you get a nice, just a solid shrink wrapped block of books. And there's always some extra backing boards on either side. So it creates a nice sandwich. I think these might be like previews catalogs here on the end. They're not bagged and boarded, but again, they're not, uh, they're not valuable in and of themselves, but they do provide an extra layer of protection there. So this is nice and solid. All right, I've gone ahead and taken all of the books out of their bags and boards because with the Mylar, it creates such a glare on the camera, it makes it hard to see. But I will show you, I mentioned earlier that I get a Mylar bag and a board with each of my comics and it costs me like 30 cents extra per book to do this. And this is a halfback board, which essentially is the same thickness as a standard board like you buy in a local comic shop where it's coated on one side. This is completely acid free all the way through. So there's no coating, it's more of a matte finish, but you can you know put either side toward the comic. And uh, I'm gonna do a video on this soon here with uh, just regarding comic supplies and storage and things. And for some of my books, I actually have two books in each bag board combo because of, of this backing board. And well, we'll talk about that in another video, but wanted to show you that. And then the Mylar bag I use, Mylar is super crystal clear and great for presentation. This is a MyLite, so made by E. Gerber. This is a MyLite, not a MyLite 2, which I think is like their most popular thickness. This is a MyLite. So this is actually a little bit thinner, but it's still the same quality of Mylar. And I don't mind it being a little thinner because I, I say this all the time that you know, if my books were being presented out where you could see them all the time, maybe that would make a bigger difference. But when they're spending 99% of their life in a completely dark short box on a shelf over here, then it doesn't really matter to me as much if that Mylar bag is a little bit thinner. So that being said, let me get these books out here. All right, first thing I'll show you 
are the Marvel's free preview catalogs that came in this shipment. Normally, I only get one. I think there was something due to the timing of when it was released or when my shipment shipped, but for one reason or another, this previous catalog is from last month, January for March, and it did not come in last month's shipment. I got it late. That's fine. It's free, and this is something you can pick up free in just about any local comic shop as well. But it always, I always be sure to include the current previews catalog. A, just because I like having it, and B, I don't know, just fun to look at. But uh, maybe that's not A and B. Maybe it's just one reason. But I like to get it. And if you went on DCBS's website today, these are the books that you would see available for pre-order. So February's catalog for books shipping in April. And that's what I'll be, I'll be placing my order for this month. I've zoomed the camera in a little bit closer because I realized that those books were not as big as they could be. Here's the first book that I paid for, and it's Return of the Valkyries, number one. This is part of the King in Black event series. This is one of the tie-in books. I was not going to get this tie-in series. I'm not reading any of the King in Black books right now. Maybe I'll pick them up after the fact if I can get them at a discount, but this one I wanted to get simply because it is an art germ variant. I had not actually seen this cover even until I just opened it here with you, and it's pretty cool. So Valkyrie on the cover there, Art Germ has, a, has an amazing painted style, and so I'm pretty consistent when I can to pick up his, his variants of books when they're available. Next up, we've got X Factor number six. This picks up after the Ten of Swords event that just recently concluded in the X-Men books. I don't remember why I got this one. This was one of the titles I think I was going to, you know, drop off after the Ten of Swords event. You know, it's been okay, but I haven't been loving it. Not enough to pay, you know, several dollars for it. I figure I'd rather just wait and see if it shows up in a dollar bin at some point down the road. And then I can use my, you know, limited dollars each month to buy other things. But anyway, I got, I got issue six, so we'll see how that is. Next up, we have Crossover, number three, from Image Comics. This is Donnie Cates and Jeff Shaw. I picked up issue one due to word of its popularity. Got that at a local shop. I did not get issue two, and then I pre-ordered issue three. And I'll be honest, the only reason I pre-ordered issue three was because of this silhouette. It looks like a giant robot, and it looks something metallic legs here. And why that may be significant from what I understand and what I've read, Donny Cates is really writing this as kind of a, a love letter to comic fans. I may be not stating that accurately, but it, it in the context of the story, you have basically the superhero comic book reality has burst into the real world. And it says, I've read that there's going to be lots of different guest appearances and he's getting to play with a whole slate of characters. And because I love Transformers and... Uh, I don't think this is a Transformer, but I just figured there might be some of these guest appearances that might be kind of cool as he gets to play with these different characters from franchises that, you know, comic fans love. So I figured give number three a shot here. Here we've got Marvel Comics Eternals number one. This is going to be a 12-issue series, obviously sparked by the upcoming movie. And I got this primarily because of the artist, Isad Ribic. Love his art style. And so I wanted to get this. At first, I thought I might pick up the whole series, but then I have not pre-ordered any of the other issues that have, um, you know, been solicited since then. And maybe I'll pick them up as back issues. I'll see how the story goes. But I really enjoy his style. There's a cool flashback to the original Eternals. And I, I just think he, he draws nice, epic scenes, and I like that painted style. So I wanted to give... Ooh, what is that? Wanted to give this uh, at least issue one a shot. So we'll see how this story goes. And like I said, maybe I'll pick up the others as we go here. And if I really like it, maybe I'll start pre-ordering the other issues as we go. So just thought I'd... Oh, and I, one more page here. Two more pages. We got Thanos showing up on the last page. All right, here we've got Thor, number 11. Another Donny Cates title. 
and Nick Klein doing the interior art still. Love the Olivier Coipel covers. Just think that's fantastic. So I've been enjoying been enjoying this run so far. So continuing with this, and this is part of the story where Donald Blake has come back on the scene. So we'll let's see where's the page here. So I have not read the Donald Blake story yet. I'm waiting for it to finish, and then I will read it all at once, but he's looking like not such a good guy in this. So we'll we'll see how that story continues to, to unfold. Here we've got another one of the Alex Ross timeless variants that continue. I thought they were just going to be for a month, maybe two, but it looks like they've gone at least three months now with covers. So we got Hawkeye, and this is on the cover of Avengers number 42 and this is a title too i like the avengers and uh, but i don't know that it's something i need to collect new every month so once this phoenix where is it what's the where's the title of the story i think wait, oh yeah enter the phoenix this is part three once this story wraps up i may pause on getting this new and just go to collecting it as back issues or i'll wait to see if any of the stories intrigue me but Again, I'm going to wait till that story completes because I, I like to complete stories if I can. Another X-Men title here, back to Hellions. This is number nine. And I've, I've enjoyed this uh, kind of ragtag group of um, mutants that have been thrown together here. It, it definitely gives me nostalgic vibes for X-Factor, being that it's you got Havoc in here and then you've got uh, Nanny and others that, you know, for those who are reading X Factor Volume One back in the day, but it's been a been a good title so far. So I, I have continued with this one post Ten of Swords. Here we've got a Transformers book from IDW. This is Beast Wars number one, and I'm not sure how this one's going to be. I love Transformers. I loved the '90s uh, Beast Wars. TV show, and I, I liked the character development, the story development, the world building that they did that, there, how they tied it into the original Generation 1 concepts and mythos. I don't know how this is going to be. Uh, this art style is going to take a little getting used to. It's a, a little, I don't know, I, I want to say cartoony. I'm not, not sure I love it yet, but maybe it'll grow on me in time. But it, initial glance, it looks a little simplistic. Um, but we'll see. They introduced some new characters here. And I don't know if it's going to be a retelling or if it's additional stories that they never told, but we'll we'll see how that goes. And because it's Transformers, I'm always willing to give it a shot. Here we've got the main Transformers ongoing title, Transformers number 26. This is the A cover story right now. It's called War World. This is, uh, was it Freddie uh, Williams doing the cover? And I think, yep, this is a wraparound. So you've got Optimus and Megatron. Let's see if I can get that open. Give you a better look at that. So that's very cool looking. I'm just catching up on Transformers, the the ongoing uh, comic. Again, because I, I usually let issues sit for a while and then I read a bunch all at once so I can complete a story. And I haven't been loving this. You know, I don't like to say negative things about anything because there's a lot of time and effort and creativity that goes into the creation of any comic book, but I have not been loving the Transformers ongoing. Honestly, maybe it was set up for somewhat of a failure in my mind to begin with because I so absolutely loved the previous world building that IDW was doing with this franchise, and I'm sad to see that it that ended and they do, did a reboot and started over, but loyalty for the franchise i'll continue to get it and hope that it will uh improve and start to to grip me more but here's transformers 26 x-men book marauders number 17 gotta say this is easily my favorite x-men title going right now i love kate pride in charge of this team uh love the art love the storyline just only good things to share about this so happy to continue this one after Ten of Swords. And, and I say that because maybe I didn't mention this earlier. There were some X-Men books that I decided I would not continue after Ten of Swords. I wanted to complete that Ten of Swords event story and then just focus on the titles that I was liking the most. And Marauders was definitely one of them. 
Here is another X-Men book though, Sword. Haven't had a chance to test this one out yet. It's only on issue two, but I, I like the art. I like the concept. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I have not read issue one yet, but I'm gonna give this at least a story arc to see how it goes. And then we'll, that was a rather unsettling, <laughs> unsettling picture. Um, but anyway, um, we'll see. We'll see how this goes through the first story arc. Give it a shot, and um, take it from there. Another Transformers ongoing number twenty-seven. Here's a variant. Actually, this isn't even a variant. This is the the A cover, but Livio Ramondelli doing the cover art. He's not doing the interiors though. But we always get his variants, similar to Art Germ. If if, if uh, Remondelli is doing a cover, almost guaranteed I will pick that up. Back to some Avengers, and here we clearly see Enter the Phoenix. I think that previous one I showed you, yeah, that was issue 42, that was part three. So these are not in any particular order, but uh, issue 41 also came out in January. So I got that one here, and I think that's just the, yeah, it's just the main cover. Cable number seven, his ongoing title, continued with this one after Ten of Swords because I like Cable. I like the concept of this teenage Cable and what he's doing. And I don't know if they're going to bring back Old Man Cable, but there have been some hints that he may not be as gone as what we thought. It's not, not the main plot right now, but kind of lingering in the background and wouldn't be a surprise, right? Because no one stays dead or gone in comics. It's just a matter of time. But I like his character, so I'll keep going with his ongoing. The other X-Men book that I got is the flagship title, X-Men, issue number 17. And I've been liking this as well. This is really where Jonathan Hickman has been doing his world building for the X-Men and what that universe holds for them, what the future is going to be. I think this is the only one that he's writing anymore, but... I, I'd like the themes that he's touching on in this, so been enjoying been enjoying this read, so looking forward to that. And that is a cool storm cover, Lionel U. And then the last book that I got in this shipment is, it may be uh, my favorite ongoing title that I'm reading right now. If not, it's definitely in the top three. Uh, I have loved what Zdarsky has been doing uh, on Daredevil. I love Daredevil as a character to begin with. And then between his writing and then uh, Marco Cicchetto's art, it's just been been a really good ride. It looks like he's not the only artist on this book because he's not he did not do the art on that page there. But I've really enjoyed his story, Electra now, Daredevil. Hopefully that's not a spoiler for anybody. I actually am a few issues behind on this ongoing as well. Got Typhoid Mary, it looks like in here. So yeah, Daredevil's in prison right now. That's creepy looking. So we'll see how this uh, how this goes. That looks like Marco Cicchetto. I'm interested. I you know obviously have read that Elektra is taking on the mantle of Daredevil, but you ever wonder how they get their costumes? Like in the Daredevil TV show, they kind of address where do the costumes come from, but in the comics themselves, they seem to be able to uh, get new costumes just about any time they want. Must make getting ready for Halloween pretty easy because, I don't know, I have a hard time coming up with a costume for Halloween. Superheroes, they change their costume pretty regularly. But that's the the last book, so we'll kind of... Here's here's our stack here. And uh, so I love love this Ramondelli cover. I would say the Storm cover's cool. This wraparound, Freddie Williams, pretty cool cover. Looking forward to that story. And then let's, uh, let's pull... Pull up the first book I showed you for one last glimpse because again, I didn't see that cover until I opened the box. So that was pretty cool to see. Gotta love a good art germ cover. All right, that's gonna do it for me and that's gonna wrap up this new comic book haul from January, 2021. I hope you saw something that you liked. If so, give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What new books are you reading? What are you loving right now? Are there titles that you've been following along and this kind of dropped off and so you're thinking about letting the title go? Or are there books that you've become interested in and you're looking to add to your pull list? If you're not ready for the fun to stop, I've got a couple hand-selected videos here you might want to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.